Kim Albright is flying above the skies of the Tennessee Valley. Here is another aerial look at what we're seeing. This is a live camera shot. The pictures that you're seeing this morning with Kim Albright are live pictures. <coughs> These were not taken earlier. These are taken right now. You can see traffic is moving very slowly. That is, of course, the area that we've been talking about, the Waterford apartment complex area, the shopping center that we see there, uh, the rubble that's been left behind. I believe, Adrian, that is the school. Is it not the business? The, the larger building that is standing tallest the bottom is right the hand former, corner. former Westbrook uh, Theater. And, uh, yes, that's what you're seeing there. Now, this appears to be over at uh, what called Country Club Apartments, mm -hmm. right directly across the street from there. See the and cars mangled and... And, of course, many of those cars belong to volunteers who are in there for rescue operations right now. What we're seeing right now is the top of Country Club Apartments. And um, Chateau is a chateau that's uh, further back to the left there. Apparently not bothered. Uh, but that's uh, part of a Country Club Apartment building right there. What we're looking at is Airport Road looking back toward Whitesburg. And what you're seeing there, that would be Quincy's Restaurant. The Crestwood just, Hospital right, area. And, and uh, Crestwood Hospital. Uh, that well, is looking along the rows of the apartment complex back there behind the shopping center we just saw a moment ago before Kim moved. Right. Back where the Waterford apartments are, some of the heavy, heaviest damaged area. A woman was in her shower at the time that the tornado hit. Nineteen confirmed fatalities at this time. Those numbers could go higher. Humana Hospital took in at least 80 people throughout the night. Uh, injuries, serious injuries, minor injuries, cuts, bruises, shock. Small children, adults. We had one confirmed fatality at Humana, which was an adult male, 32 years old. Those numbers are just now coming in. Uh, it, you know, it's so hard to say. You have friends and you have family that are in the area. La phone lines were hard to get through last night. They're opening up slowly again this morning. Many areas of town still without power, still without utilities. We talked with Craig Beasley earlier this morning with TVA. He had mentioned that TVA is bringing in linesmen from Mississippi and Tennessee to help restore power. They had five 161,000 uh, watt lines that were down, mm. which means that they cannot give power to Huntsville Utilities. And without the power supply to them, Huntsville Utilities cannot get all that power back restored. But Huntsville Utilities is working very hard with TVA to get the power restored. It will be months, possibly years, before some of these communities will be built back up and look the way they looked before yesterday afternoon at 4.30. Much of the airport road area looks like a war zone, and that's where Don Phelps joins us live. Don, do you see much activity there tonight? Not too much tonight, Heather. The operations that have been going on here around the clock for better than 24 hours have now ceased. As you can imagine, these workers were worn out. They have worked at a fever pitch around the clock trying to rescue people from the debris here at the Westbury Shopping Center and what was in back of me, the old Gold Bro store. As you can imagine, also tonight, the temperature has dropped. It is bitterly cold out here tonight. This is not a place to have rescue operations taking place, to have people out here working in this kind of environment. As you said at the top of the uh, newscast, it looks much like a war zone. I couldn't help but, as I drove in tonight, just thinking about the scenes that we had seen from uh, Germany and other places in Europe during World War II that were bombed out. And, of course, it will take quite a while to reconstruct all this, to clean up the rubble here. It will be weeks and even possibly months to come. But this wasn't the only hard area hit. The Jones Valley area was also hard hit by this twister. The twister hit first here and then moved off to my east up here and then into Jones Valley. And as Beverly Taylor reports, that neighborhood is now on the road to recovery. a very prominent sound in the Jones Valley community for quite some time. This once attractive neighborhood is now a disaster area. I'm so glad I, I kind of saw what happened last night. I, I, I couldn't have tasted it this morning. That's true. Not seen it last night. Yeah, but, but I knew it was awful. Yeah. I bought a tennis racket yesterday. Oh, did you? Uh -huh. It's okay. It was it was nice to know that we got all the stuff like wedding pictures and all that, but but I was just glad that nobody was home. Many Jones Valley residents and curious onlookers are just walking through the neighborhood, not believing what they see. Uh, it's, it's devastating. I mean, you got to be down here to see it. Really, this is uh, uh, some of the houses are completely gone. People are completely homeless. Uh, most of the trees are gone now. Uh, 
it's going to have to be completely re-landscaped. Although saddened by their property losses, the residents are grateful there were no deaths within the immediate area. As for their future, they'll just start over. This is made a bit easier because of strong community spirit. In Huntsville, Beverly Taylor, 31 Eyewitness News. We see the destruction there by that tornado in the Jones Valley area. Also hit was a Jones Valley Elementary School. Now, while school was out, there was still a group of children, teachers, and painters in there for an after daycare school. And tonight, as Amy Whittery reports, she has a remarkable story from one teacher who is thanking God for being alive. Tears filled Tori Owen's eyes as she looked upon her school. Filled with emotion, the young school teacher stared in amazement at the crumpled school. Yesterday afternoon, Tori, two other teachers, two painters, and 37 children were in Jones Valley when the building came tumbling down. Remember a lot except that there was stuff falling on us. Kids are screaming. Kids were screaming? I had somebody under me and... The paint crew had the rest of my kids in my kindergarten class and me all under me in, in um, Iowa. And uh, when it was over, all of my kids got out, but we didn't know where the other ones were and they had already gotten out. Today, work crews began digging through the rubble, hoping to find something to salvage. In the field across the street, the tornado's strength left its mark. School desks tossed awkwardly in the grass. Children's drawings and rulers crumpled and broken. But for so many like Tori, today is a day to count blessings, not lost possessions. When you look back at the school today, what are you thinking? It's a miracle we made it. It really is. In Huntsville, Amy Whitty, 31 Eyewitness News. Of course, the students of Jones Valley Elementary did not go to school today, and they will not go back to school until Monday. At that time, they will be reporting to the new Challenger School, which was uh, constructed nearby. According to Mary Jane Kelly, the superintendent of the public schools, it should take some two years to rebuild that school. Now, Jones Valley wasn't the only school hit by this twister. Also hit was the tornado demolished the Holy uh, Spirit Catholic Church and school on Airport Drive. Today, one resident walked through the rubble looking for a place to lay a bouquet of flowers. No word yet on what the church and the school plans to do. Grace Lutheran Church notified Eyewitness News and wants to offer help to Holy Spirit, but has been unable to contact the church and school leaders. If you're one of those leaders, call Grace Lutheran if you need some help. As we look around here, and as I said earlier at the top of the newscast, it will take some time to rebuild this section here. It will also take some time to rebuild those schools that were devastated by this twister. Now, we heard a lot of reports earlier in the day that perhaps we were lucky, or we weren't so lucky. The tornado hit at the worst possible time, but we don't even dare imagine what would have happened if the tornado would have hit a little bit earlier when those schools were packed and parents were out in front, lined up, waiting to pick up their children. Heather. Don, we have a lot to, to be thankful for despite the death and the destruction. Thank you. Well, of the nearly 500 people injured in this tragedy, about 85 are still hospitalized. And for every sprain, scratch, or fracture, there's a sad story and maybe even a hero. That's the case with one family who lived in a townhome off Airport Road. Liz Hurley spoke with them today from Humana Hospital's chapel. What, what do you say when, you know, your whole family... You almost lost your whole family. You know, it's kind of tough. Barbara's mom and dad, their daughter Patty and grandsons Thomas and Brian, were at home in the Waterford Square apartments when the tornado struck. They saw it coming, and that they all ran into the middle bathroom, and my father and my sister laid on top of my brother and my mother, trying to save them. And I heard that they just kind of got blown out of the apartment. Brian was thrown into the front yard with his Aunt Patty. His head was bleeding profusely. His aunt's leg was broken severely in many places. And his grandmother, Mary, was dead under the rubble. Our mother was kind of a center point in all of our lives, our mom and dad. And 
She's not here anymore. The Lord says that all things work out for the good for those who love him. And I know my mom loved him, and I know I love him, and I know my family love him. And I don't understand the reason, but I know that my mom's now in a better place. And <laughs> there'll be a day we'll all be back together. In this chapel outside the intensive care unit, Brian's family can only hope that he will survive. He's lived through five hours of brain surgery. His father credits much of that to the heroics of his aunt, who tried to protect him. She couldn't save him or her mother, but she was able to save my son. And uh, she did it without regards to herself. There were hundreds of heroes in this disaster, including the doctors and nurses and medical personnel who worked in less than optimum conditions saving lives. Those at Crestwood were merely a mass unit, stitching up the injured by flashlight. Another precious byproduct of the tornado, long lines of blood donors at the American Red Cross building on Washington Street. With the holidays just around the corner, the Red Cross needed the extra donors anyway, but one man lamented the lack of blood before the tornado. I give blood pretty regular, and uh, I think everybody should. You know, it's a, it's a year-round thing for people. And it ought not be an emergency situation that makes people come down because the Red Cross, you know, they're, under, they're understaffed, and it's hard for them to handle so many people at once. The emergency management agency was here and assured us that state help was on the way. There are people in need here. Uh, injuries, deaths, loss of uh, not only life but property, losses of jobs. Uh, there's an immediate need and there's been an immediate response to it. And help is apparently on the way from Montgomery as Huntsville's mayor, Steve Henninger, marches off to see what the deadly twister has done to his city. Huntsville again is picking up and putting, trying to put lives back together. Uh, we've got to have money, though. We've got to have state money. We've got to have federal money to assist. And Governor Guy Hunt, we hear, is going to be here tomorrow to assess the situation. I don't see how anyone can argue it, though. It's just utter devastation here. Ron Keller followed uh, Huntsville's mayor around the town today. He had a frown on his face for most of the day, and he has worked some long hours himself. And here's Ron's report. Just after 9 this morning, Huntsville Mayor Steve Hettinger, Madison County Commission President Mike Gillespie, and a handful of other city leaders took to the sky. They surveyed millions of dollars of destruction, no damage amount yet, and the mayor didn't sleep before addressing the nation's news media in an early morning news conference. We've had it uh, well under control since right after it happened, and uh, many things have been occurring over the last uh, uh, few hours, but... Uh, we feel like uh, the emergency response was well handled. Then, at an impromptu meeting with city council, Hettinger heard an eyewitness account from one of the council's own. It just came up all of a sudden. It was a heavy yeah. thunderstorm. And it's, I could hear the, hear the hail. Mm -hmm. And then, all of a sudden, the windows blew out, and then it was just an explosion. We will begin working today to uh, restore order, begin the cleanup, the long cleanup. Uh, uh, that's there, and if there are any more injuries and, and uh, fatalities down there, uh, finding those. Hedinger declared a state of emergency in Huntsville, but before even boarding the chopper, the mayor had a response from Governor Guy Hunt. Uh, the governor already has a declaration in hand awaiting arrival of this from the local government. It has to be received before he can do that, of course, and I'm sure that by now he's already put his name on that. The answer a fast-moving mayor had waited for. In Huntsville, Ron Keller, 31 Eyewitness News. Now, we're not just thinking about southeast Huntsville. This same storm moved through the rural parts of Madison County and Gurley. It blew apart a county shed. Several homes also took a beating. Tim Hall was there.